Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Get Your Pain On Here this Thursday. I am joined by a new person, an old person, and an older person. <laughs> is well, let me actually give you the names. Uh, we got Tony Konacek. Good morning. He's our wonderful, wonderful, beautiful person over there who's always here. He's rock. I wasn't going to finish the rest of that <laughs> statement because that would have been weird. We've got Tanner Thomas. Hey, everybody. And we have Introduce Yourself, Newbie. Hey guys, I'm Kalen Earl. This is my second time streaming, hey. actually. I love Kalen. Kalen's a wonderful person. Thank you. Um, he used to sit not next to me, but very close to me. And then you moved and, away. Uh, in, in school, you know? At school. No, not, at, not actually in school, but, but at the <laughs> office. He's a great guy. He is one of our... Why don't you explain a little bit about what you do? Uh, I am a <coughs> digital sculptor and engineer here at Private he, He's the one who's responsible for making all of our models super cool. And make, and make them fit together. And make them fit together so that you guys can actually assemble them without pulling your hair out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's awesome. Uh, we're going to go really quickly through the schedule and a couple of other announcements real quick. Let's go to the schedule. That's not the schedule, that's Tony. Not the, there, that's My the schedule. My goodness, Tony. What have you had this That's morning? what happens when I futz around right before the show. Stop futzing around. Well, that's maybe my fault. Uh, so stuff's pretty much uh, your normal Wednesdays and Thursdays. Dev, hang out and get your paint on. Uh, March 20th, uh, which I believe is next week. Yeah, and that, that's, that's a Friday. It is because next. Oh, yeah. That's right. the last day of the Warcaster Kickstarter. Correct. We are going to have a staff showdown for the final day of the Warcaster Kickstarter. So get that checked out. That's going to be really sweet. Uh, on April 3rd, we will have our next hobby hangout. So we're going to be putting those on hold for a little bit while we uh, do our staff showdown. I, th I believe that's the following week. So we're just that's, Yeah, that's correct. So we're going to push that one. Uh, let's go to subscriptions. So some of you who are already subscribed may have already noticed that the... Tony, you already deleted it, but the, the Riot Quest loot coin emote has been unlocked. Mm -hmm. So thank you, everybody, who has subscribed for that. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. The center up emote has been unlocked. Yeah, we've unlocked. So ignore the graphic. I didn't have time to update it, uh, but the center up emote has been unlocked. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I had zero faith in what Tony said. <laughs> <laughs> so we have unlocked the center up emote, so everybody can keep me in line, making sure that I'm uh, centered up all, at all times. Uh, the hype emote, which is our next emote that we'll unlock, we'll unlock at 175 subs. So we're pretty close. So... Um, Keep telling all your friends, all your, your family members to subscribe to the channel so we can get that hype emote unlocked. Um, just remind you guys, don't forget to re-up your Amazon Prime subscription. Uh, it does cancel after one month, so if you guys did use that, feel free to go back and give us a little bit more of your love. Um, let's go to Mini Crate real quick. Oh, I want to say one more thing about that center up emote is that we will not have the art for it until our next episode of Get Your Paint On. Yeah, so, so it, we did unlock it, yep. won't have it quite yet. Yep. We'll have it next week. Get and your spam sure fingers awesome. ready. Uh, we've got the mini crate models of Gremlin Spring Break Party, uh, which is available through March 19th. So we've got about another seven days on that one. Uh, and we've got the VIP model, Double O Debray, which is available through February. Uh, and then the L5R mini crate, we've got Shiba Tsukune, which is new, uh, and that goes through April 5th. And uh, VIP Tengu Sensei, which is probably one of my favorite models. So fun. Um, available through May 5th. Uh, Savage Mini Crate. Today's the last day to get Valeria. You guys want to get this guy, this lady, excuse me, no, <coughs> this lady. Um, go ahead and subscribe for this month if you want to get VIP Red Sonia. By July 12th, go ahead and subscribe for the six month plan. All right. Last thing, Warcraxer Kickstarter is live. We are currently at $334,000. Thank you, everybody, who has already backed the Kickstarter. And we've been unlocking stretch goals left and right. Yeah, it's awesome. And it's, and it's been steadily going up. So um, I, I'm looking forward to showing off some new stuff and um, seeing some painted models up there for, for Continuum as soon as they can get up there. And, uh, yeah, guys, pledge now. Get us, get us uh, some more stretch goals unlocked. That'd be awesome. All right. We're back to my beautiful face. <laughs> Always. <laughs> oh, look at that. All right. Let's look at more beautiful things. Let's look at this model that we were doing today. So those of you who don't already know, we are painting a couple of Continuum Light War Jacks, the Scourge. Um, so we've got a couple of different loadouts. Um, this is going to be more of a melee-oriented loadout. He's got a, an additional melee weapon here. And Tanner is going to be painting a ranged loadout. 
I do have the sweet oh. uh, grabby claw, though, the same one that you have. Yep, yeah, so the, the grabby claw is fixed. So the, one of the really cool things about the Scourge Warjack is it comes with a compulsory option, well, not option, it just comes with the crab claw arm, and it has two shoulder hard points instead of one, um, and it has one uh, arm hard point. So uh, a little bit of different loadout. Um, and because this question has come up, there, mm -hmm. it, there's currently no option to put on a second giant claw. You can't have two Cor uh, correct, claw arms. Yeah. That'd be cool if we had that in the future. That would be awesome. I feel like you could um, do enough killing with the one. <laughs> it's probably true. <laughs> just probably probably true I, two is just over. That's just showing off, right? Yes. But anyways, <laughs> to, to our plans for today. <laughs> I don't even know, so I'm excited. So, so uh, what I wanted to do, because I'm still kind of in the process of designing the recipe for this faction, um, I wanted to go through kind of my thought process for building a recipe for a new... Um, faction. So I'm going to kind of go through that process from start to finish and we're going to see how it kind of comes out. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get started with that. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to pull up the color concept. Oh, Tony's got both of them. Perfect. All right. So hey. uh, a couple of things you'll notice with the color concept here is uh, we've got a lot of gray, which is a neutral color. Um, we've got some like greenish metallic tones and we've got red. So there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. Um, we can do, so red and green obviously are complementary colors. You'll see on the color wheel to the left hand side, um, the red and green are opposites. This is complementary. This means that they're, they complement one another. Um, we could do a split complementary, which is kind of like uh, you take three different points of the, uh, thank you, Tony. Would like you, radio Would you birds. indicate what what mm -hmm. split complementary looks like? Yeah, there you go. Mm. There you go. That is what split complementary is. Beautiful. So if we wanted to do something like that, we could go with a little bit of yellow green or blue green to go with the red, or we could push the red to a little bit more violet color and go with blue and yellow, but I was thinking about doing something a little bit different and going with um, like a violet or purple undertones for the gray armor, I think would complement everything really well. Um, Tony, what are you doing? You just look like you're I thought you were, I thought you were doing a split complementary from I, purple. No, I'm doing the, it's what, it's triadic is what that is? Yeah. Tony's just channeling his inner John Madden. Triadic. <laughs> Triadic. Which would be like a blue, violet, yellow, green, and red, orange. So, and we can push this a little bit more so it shifts a little bit more towards the, the purple. Um, but, oh darn, you know what we don't have? We don't have bad brews, which would be the All exact the color that we would want. The new purple. So, we're, I'm kind of going to use this as the, the base for the concept of the, the recipes, right? So our red orange is going to be our glow. Our yellow green is going to be the, um, the metallic greens. And then the blue violet or violet is going to be the undertones for this gray armor. Sounds just crazy enough to work. Yeah, uh, screw fizzle, you can. It's, it's just, it, metallics are just another color, right? So it just incorporates, um, like if you pull like a bluish, silver, right? Like that's going to be a bluish tone for you to use. So um, let's start with a little bit of this gray armor. So let's go with some Thamar black. Krennic Gaming uh, as a highlighted message, getting this faction from my fiance and we're going to paint them up to look very cyberpunk. Uh, I approve. I love cyberpunk look. I do as well. I'm super excited for this whole faction. This is definitely a faction I'm going to be doing. Are we going with straight Thamar Black or are we going to be mixing this up? We're going to be mixing this up. I'm just okay. putting a little bit of it on my palette right now. Cool. Uh, so I'm going to pull a couple of colors together. Uh, I'm going to get some beaten purple. And a little bit of coal black, which I'm going to have to send over to you. 
My Famar Black is misbehaving. Here, it's, I a got little, a, it's a little empty. I got a second bottle for you, right Ooh. here. Awesome. That's a full bottle. Thanks, buddy. Yep. Jordan's always prepared. Well, this is exactly why I pulled two extra bottles. He is, <laughs> he is an Eagle Scout. I, that is true. <laughs> That's not actually a lie. I am an Eagle Scout. It got me my first job. No joke. Was it this one? No. <laughs> no. You said uh, Murder's Magenta or Beat and Purple? Uh, beat and Purple. So... Mix it up. I'm going to mix a little bit of that Thamar Black with a little bit of Coal Black. And uh, you want to pull up that color concept again, Tony, yeah. so I can see um, a good place for us to start. Talk so to let's start with this ready. Crab Claw area, because there's a lot of gray over here, and it'll give us a lot of options to... Uh, Tanner, you can see where we're putting this gray, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Thanks, buddy. Sorry, buddy. I'm <coughs> not paying attention here. Sharing is caring. It's all good. Um, so I'm just going to put this Thamar Black and Coal Black on this claw. And center up just a little more, Jordan. Sorry. I also want a quick shout out to Josh and production for hooking us up with these awesome, like, uh, Oh, I can't even Pads. think of the word for it. Yeah, silicone they made, mats. They made some silicone, silicone mats. mats for us yeah. to do because our, our cutting mats are getting a little grungy. So uh, in the future, we should have these cool. Shout uh, out to Josh and Jim. Cool silicone for mats. Being awesome. Yeah. And we're just putting this on the armor shell of the uh, claw there. Yeah. And this is a mix of Thamar and This Cold is Black. just like Th Thamar with a touch of Cold Black. Gotcha. Center up, Tanner. Ooh, if only we had the center up emote <laughs> in time. In, in time. It's incoming. Tony, I want my sandwich. We gotta, we gotta work that out. <laughs> I, I, I have not been avoiding uh, buying subs at all. It has just been one of those things I keep forgetting to Where's my coordinate. Sub? Do I not get a sub? You are well, no. You're so we're, gonna, a sub. we're all gonna go for subs. I listed everybody that gets one, and we're like, we're like seven or eight people deep at this point. Oh, what are we getting subs for? Because we got 120 subs. I think we need to get oh. it down to to three. Hey, Tony, subs we, for we subs. Should, we should go to to Jersey Mike's today. Oh, I should, probably shouldn't say that, should I? We should go to brand brand name sub shop. We, we today. should go to brand name sub shop today. <laughs> I brought you, you call it <laughs> whoopsies. You call it York Joe's. York Joe's. Yeah, it's not a real thing. So nice. <laughs> York Joe's. I like it. We'll we'll see you there. All right. So that is really watery. That's way more watery than I wanted it to be. All right. So I'm just gonna try something different up here while I'm waiting for that to dry. And so this is a mix of coal black and beaten purple. And I'm going to paint this all over this top area on this guy. And it looks like you only did your uh, your black mix on part that yeah, the uh -huh. armor shell. Usually when I'm just trying to like pick out colors, I'll just paint like one half of something just because I'm focusing on that one area to get it to kind of what I want. Okay. Um, and then once I nail in the recipe, then I'll work on the rest of the model. So you're out there with a coal black and... Uh, yeah, so this is beaten purple and coal black. All right. Uh, mixed at like a one-to-one -one ratio. Gotcha. And Jordan, if you can center up just a little more, just well, a I'm fine. bit to your He's right. He's so fine. There you go. Oh, my goodness. Hey, Jordan, you're so fine. No part of the model was off the screen. Wasn't good enough. I, wanted to, I, want, your, I want your work area centered nicely. Nothing's ever good enough for Tony. Uh, it's true. Chasing that perfection. Tony is chasing the perfection. It's a flaw. You're applying this on his neck plate there? Yeah. Mine is very purple. Should it be more coal black? No, it should be purple. Okay. Because we want that purple to be the undertone, but we want to have a little bit of blue in it. Same thing, tenor center up. Coal black oh, is coming from. Further away from you there. See, I used to have a target lock sticker, but then Josh had to be super nice well, and make a silicone mask. When we get center up icons, I'm going to have center up stickers. Dude, can you get center up stickers, like fancy ones, that we could put all over the place? I don't know about fancy. <laughs> can we just get center up stickers? Can we get center up stickers that say fancy, that... and then they are fancy. Oh, there you go. That's, that's This is why we brought Kalen along. He's an innovator. Yeah. Innovation. That's what they call me. Kalen the innovator. Yeah. All right. So we're going to take a little bit of iron hole. I just threw over to you. Yeah. And we're going to mix that in. You just yeeted it over here. I did just yeet it over there. And this still should be a little purple. And um, we're going to mix it into the upper layer here. You're mixing that iron hole gray into the same color you were just using? Yeah. All right, then. That can be arranged. 
just going to lighten it up a little, basically. Yeah. I might need to go a little higher. Yeah, I don't, I'm not really a big fan of that. So maybe we'll add a little bit more beaten purple and then a little bit of mouth white highlight to this. And are you using that color to highlight the neck part that we just did? The neck part, yeah. Right, yeah. Gotcha. That is actually super crazy how that purple is creating a, a natural shadow for like a gray color. It's pretty cool. That's hard to see. Let's work on another area where it will be easier to see. Like this back plate here. Let's see how this works. So you're just adding in this lighter purple on onto this back plate. And then I'm gonna And, then, and this again. is this is a base color for that back plate too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then I'll just go back and shade with the, the previous color mix that I was using. I think this thing is my favorite jack in the game so far. It, it, I agree. Uh, yeah. So, so it looks like you're you're getting a little bit too much coal black over there. Okay. Um, you're going to want... Here, I'll pass this back over to Tanner. Yeah, let me take mind. a look ski. Short arms. <clears throat> so it's like really purple. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That can be a wrench. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just add a little dab. All right. Mix so that around. We're going to see... i got to remix this purple. Tanner using a really underused but awesome method of just mixing wet paint right oh, on the, the right the on coal, the coal black model. back over here. Yeah, my layer was still wet, so it was pretty easy for me just can to pick up a little coal black. black. Of course I can. Jordan needs the coal black. There's coal black. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of throwing things this episode because that's Tony's uh, favorite. Yeah, we don't have any coal black over on the thing. <clears throat> Screwfizzle wants to know about wet blending and wondering if you can do it with metallics. Uh, yeah. It's a little bit more weird, but... What's weird about it? Um, just metallics are a weird form of paint in general. Um, don't really behave the way that, like, regular opaque paint works. Oh, I'm off screen. Sorry, guys. Um... So you got to kind of like treat it a little bit differently. Um, but I mean, you can, you can wet blend basically anything. Um, I think this is definitely closer to the purple you've got going brush, on there now. Two brush blending in this purple. Oop. Yeah, it looks Ooh, like too a lot closer. <laughs> so I'm going to get back in here and do a little bit more of that. Yeah, I think the problem with doing the uh, the iron hole is the iron hole looks like it's actually it's hard to see with the shine on here, but this this iron hole ended up being darker than the the purple shadow, which was weird. So we're gonna rebase coat this over. Uh, screw fizzle. I'm not quite sure we understand your question. Just by adding black to the color or white, are you are you still talking about metallics? What? Not yet. I don't know what you're talking little, about. A little more context to that question, please. Yeah. So you said you're rebase coating that neck plate, and are you just doing that with a? Uh, no, I'm not rebase coating it. I'm just rehighlighting it. Oh, gotcha. Over the spot with the um, the what you call it? The what you call it? My brain is working very well this morning. I can uh, see. Over where the iron hole spot was because it was too dark. Travis is asking what background we feel is best for streaming painting. Uh, that's, a, that's a big preference based on what you're doing. Uh, in my experience, um, solid black is not ideal, uh, especially if you're working with black primed models. It does look nice and frames things uh, well. It can look okay. Um, white. Uh, kind of like we have here works all right, but you can see that some of the edges of the white model kind of don't pop out as much. So my the ones that I have liked the most in the past have been um, just kind of like pretty pretty soft, non-intense colors. 
uh, light blues, light green, tan. I mean, even gray, right? Just something where where black doesn't bleed into it. But really, just experiment with different stuff. It kind of depends on your uh, your vision too. Yeah. And your setup, right? Your lighting setup can make a difference. Uh, how you're prepping your models all makes a difference. So uh, there, there. I don't want to say there isn't a good answer, but over time there have been some that I kind of, you know, I tend to avoid. So what I'm going to want to do here a little bit is try and pull in some of those other colors so I can adjust what the colors are going to look like. So I'm going to paint in a glow right above, like right on this top plate. So let me try and get this mouth white highlight to cooperate. It's a little chunky. Uh, all right, so right here, there's this channel. Where the red should go. We got a question in chat from Steve uh, asking about if they can find um, basic rules for Warcaster wanting to learn more about the models and how the game uh, is different compared to War Machine and Hordes. And I am posting a link into the chat right now that will take you to the gameplay page for Warcaster where you can download um, the, the basic rules, model rules, things like that to take a look. And that uh, can just be found on the gameplay area of Warcaster.com. And those, if I'm not mistaken, are the current rules, which are not 100% guaranteed. Yeah, yes, they are still labeled as play test rules. They're um, so they could possibly change and adjust uh, before the official release of the game. And you're just uh, painting in that Menoth white highlight with the intent to do a glaze through that channel, right? Yeah, I'm doing a little bit of a red glaze on some of the areas I know are going to have this red glow sounds good but well, and wait. and why are you doing that before you paint that area i'm just doing this while he, while i'm waiting for him to finish up gotcha and also while i was waiting for this to dry on the armor plate so the more i'm looking at this the more i'm thinking that it's probably better to start with a brighter color Center. and yeah. then shade down into the purples. So start with like a neutral gray and then shade with purples. Because this is looking, I think, too purple. Like if you com compare it to the illustrations and the color concepts, like it's very different. Um, and, and the idea is that I want to match it as best as possible. So I think what we're going to do uh, for the next tries, we're going to start with Bash and Gray, <coughs> which I don't know if you have over there. I don't think so. Okay. So this is a little bit of like a, a slightly brighter kind of greenish gray, which will work with the, um, the green metallics. And I'm actually going to paint this over this section here. And do you just use a, like a straight up red ink for that, that uh, glaze you did? No, I just used a kit of red. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, Just water okay, down. base, excuse me. Yeah. But I wouldn't bother doing that right now. Okay. I'd just go onto this. Sure. Iron hole gray? Or bastion gray? This is bastion. Yeah. Bastion. And the bastion might end up being a little too warm of a color. Because um, it's looking a little brown as I'm applying it on here. Uh, and I'm looking for more of a gray tone. So I might switch this up. Depending on how I'm feeling. So this is, yeah, this is definitely kind of a... It's a know, weird process, right? Well, yeah, and not one that we get to see you do very much because, you know, a lot of times you're coming in kind of just painting a personal model and it's whatever looks good, whatever feels good, however you want to do it. And yeah. in this case, you actually have a, a target you're trying yep. to match, so... It's, it's, it's a weird kind of balancing point. It's a lot of using your, uh, like, intuition as far as, like, knowing what colors work your work well together, your familiarity with the, the paint range, and um, 
kind of good color theory in general. Yeah, yeah, and just like, because if I'm going to put like cool shadows, right, it's okay to have warm highlights, but I don't know if I want to have um, the like surface of the material be be warm as well. Um, but it might be okay, to, depending on the other colors too. Um, so while that dries, I'm gonna try and mix up. Sorry, I'm wor I'm running real fast over Tanner here, so he's you're probably fine. having a hard time catching you up. You are fine. But uh, I'm gonna try and mix up some of this uh, this green, and it's kind of like a pale green on the the color concept. So I'm gonna take some coal black or no coal black cold steel. And I'm going to mix it with a little bit of worm green and see where we get. It's kind of a green metallic. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that, that you know, some of our viewers, like if you, another thing about painting, um, you know, doing studio models or doing them this way is that uh, you are kind of tied to having it match something, which means that when you make decisions, it's not just making decisions to match, but that you don't have complete freedom so if if you like something but it doesn't match the concept um, it still might need to be adjusted and simultaneously if you're having trouble getting something to work you can't just say ah close enough and, yeah and go on so that's uh that's not a situation that every every painter is completely familiar with so this is worm and cold steel worm green and cold steel yep okay um, and I actually kind of like how this is coming out uh, can we pull up the color concept again real quick, Tony? So and a lot of this is kind of going back and forth with the color concept to kind of see where your color placement's going. And, so, you know, some in some cases you can adjust the, the color placement a little bit to, to figure out where specifically you need to put stuff. Um, this is a nice little kind of green color. Uh, we can go back. And are you putting this on those little metallic parts, like his underjaw and stuff like that? Yeah, his underjaw and the, the top area here. Uh, I'm going to put it on this ring here as well. So are we looking for a, a steel color that's just a little tinted green? Uh, for you? No, it's it's going to be pretty green. Okay. Um, here, let me see if I can kind of paint nice this on something. Green. Here, if you want to pass that over to him. Uh, Panthera Anka. Uh, has a question, what are the things the units are attached to and how are they secured? I'm not sure I understand your question. I think he's are talking, talking about, about the paint caps. Yeah, the caps. Oh, okay. So these are um, lids to spray paint cans and um, we affix them to the models with double-sided uh, mounting tape. Mm -hmm. And then we just prime them right when they're attached to the, yep. the top of the paint can so if you're the nice thing about using the paint can lids is they're super cheap and if you're priming your models with uh with rattle can primer um you'll just start amassing a collection of lids to use yep it's true kind of replenishes itself don't go running around stealing them from your dad's paint cabinet <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can pull them off once you're done and then you can put them on your base well what, what's the point of using that jordan Using what? Your paint cap, uh, the, the uh, spray paint cap. It's so that you don't um, have to touch the model and you get a good grip that you can hold on to while you're painting and you can kind of turn it upside down and hold on to it. Um, having just the base, if I just had the base on it right, I would basically have to hold it with two fingers or like this and I wouldn't have as much control. I can hold on to it, I get a better grip on, on something a little bit more solid. Um, like the paint cap, right? Whereas the base is very thin and, and wide, right? So I, I don't have as much control over the model. Ergonomics are pretty important when you're painting for a it's long true. period of time. It's like true. You're taking care of your lower back and your wrist, especially. All right, so. Yeah, and just, and just to follow up, they do just pop right off when you're done. So you just pop the model off, take the uh, tape off the feet, and then affix it to the base. It's also nice if you're playing Mom Pock so you don't have to try and spray paint your okay. your transparent bases. Uh, yeah, Mom, Mom Pock is challenging that. in that way if you're not going to have... Oh, I've seen some where people have added added flock can, and gravel and made opaque bases. Some um, great coat gray. 
Yeah, yeah with the clear bases, uh, attaching your model to something else first and then being able to take it off and attach it after the fact is key. Did you get a, a nice color on your green over there? Yeah, I mean, it definitely looks green. So I'm just going to line in some of these areas that are going to be green. With that same color? Yeah. Okay. And he's going to be finding us a great coat gray for us to base coat this armor back in. I right. think I have one handy. There's one. Is that two? How do you like that? I got two of them right here. Excellent. Brown chicken, brown cow. Not the hero we deserve. So the hero great coat gray is like a, a real bluish gray. Um, and I think that that will make a better base coat that will make this greenish metallic stick out a little bit better than what we've got going on. So I'm going to try this. You're going to use that as a base coat and put yeah. your green on top of it? Yep. And I'm actually going to mix it with a little bit of uh, Menoth White Highlight as well. Just to kind of see what some of the highlighted areas would look like with it. I'm going to put this on the face because it's right next to the jaw that has metallic on it. Yeah, from here I can see that popping out. Looks nice. Yeah. Alec Luda, those are some great looking sculptures. Thank you. And thank you for calling them sculptures. It sounds so fancy. It's a pretty, uh, it's a very European thing. So where are you tagging this thing with that base coat that we just mixed up? I'm hitting the shoulder right here. And oh, okay. You're just doing it over the spot that you originally did green. Yeah. Gotcha. Kind of that inset where that big wire's at, or cable or whatever. Uh, yeah, so the cable's probably just going to be black. Gotcha. Uh, not in there. It's it's the armor plates around it. Gotcha. Is what I'm, I'm painting right now. All right. And uh, just real fast, Jordan, can you, can you point out that cable that you're talking about that's so in, you, in the arm? I'm talking about this right here okay. in there. So I'm painting it around, painting around it right now. Okay, I, I like where this is coming. We've got to see what this looks like with a little bit of uh, red next to it. Let's see if it's too blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint. Paint it on the top here, over where some of that purple is. And center up just a little more, Jordan. Yep, sorry. Thank you. Trying to get a good good base coat on this. Uh, there's a follow-up question about the wet blending with the silver pigments. Yep. Too. Um, so it's from Screw Fizzles. Uh, I guess he's expanding his question. So if I were to have gold or a silver, do I add a white or black to be able to wet blend? What do you, do you add... Nothing. You just wet blend the two colors together. Like, um, yeah, like if I'm wet blending something, well, let me get a better brush to do this with. Like, I'm just grabbing some silver. I'm putting it on here. And then I'm getting some, some of this purple, right? I'm putting it right here. And then when you wet blend them together, you're just blending them together on the surface while they're wet. This is like, that is wet blending. So it's, if it's paint, you can, you can do it. You just have to have the right consistency of paint to water ratio. So I noticed that with that iron hole gray and menoth white highlight mix, like you suggested, yeah. this uh, green metallic mix that we did pops out way more. It's way yeah. more visible. Center, yep. up, center up, Tanner. Sorry about that. Um. Quasador saying, the concept of experimenting with colors like this on a model fills me with anxiety. <laughs> it's it's is it, tough. It, like, is it the... And it's a weird color scheme, too. Like, yeah. red and green, like... It's one thing if you just do a gray that has no, like if you just do black and white and put no color in it, and then your only contrasting colors are the glow and the green. But 
if you do that, it, it looks really boring. So you have to find something that complements the complement that already exists, which is red and green. Actually, here's another idea. Tony, you want to pull up the color concept and color wheel again? Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready so, with the Telestrator. I'm excited to follow along. So we could do a tetratic, which is red, green, blue, violet, and yellow, orange. Or that, so that's interesting. Is so it would be like, I don't know what that would look like in gray though. So that's probably not a great idea. The yellow orange is hard to do with gray. So maybe just doing the yellow green, blue violet, and red orange is probably the best. And just be happy with it. <laughs> I don't know. It's tough. This is some, some weird stuff going on here. So we're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little bit more of this red so I can get a better idea of what this is going to look like. So Travis is saying that he experimented on his marchers and it was terrifying. Um, but I, I, I'm applauding you, Travis, for experimenting. Like, I, it is terrifying. And it, like, if you're out there experimenting and doing different stuff that you haven't done before, <coughs> excuse me, you should feel a little uncomfortable. Um, I think you don't want that all the time, kind of like the convention in a horror movie. Every horror movie usually has moments of levity uh, to help you recover. So you need those times when you're just painting things that are safe and comfortable. But if you want to level up and you want to you know, push your painting, uh, you need to take the chances and, and get a little uncomfortable. Yeah, in worst case I scenario, agree. you just strip off the paint and then try over again. Well, yes. really, to me, if you're applying your layers as thin as you should be, any mistake you make, you can really just paint, paint over. over. Yeah. yeah. Strip it and start over. This is interesting. So this is just kind of going over more of the areas with this great coat gray. Did you paint like his whole face with that uh, green metallic that you mixed up? Yeah. Well, and the, well, it's just the. Um, not his whole face, just the, there's a little top cap you can see on there. Oh, Sorry. Yep, yep. Oh, mine has a different head. That's why. Oh, That's why. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's like, man, yeah. this is confusing. <laughs> yeah, I forgot that yours has, like, totally different stuff. That's okay. It. I got this figured out now. Um, <laughs> it was like, oh, well, now that I know that, <laughs> it's easy. All right. So I think I'm happiest right now with the great coat gray. So I might try and incorporate some purple into this great coat gray and use this in here. We'll kind of push that a little bit further around the model to see what, where that goes. Center up a little bit, Jordan. Yep. There you go. So since we talked about the uh, different heads, should we talk about what they do? Yeah, in -game? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, the Killer Cortex, which is the melee one, I assume. I think you have yep, the melee this, one, right? This, this one. Yeah. yeah. So that one, uh, it can move two inches when it destroys something in melee with an attack. So oh yeah, they were talking about this uh, earlier uh, yesterday on the dev stream that it can kind of chainsaw through squads, right? Because it yep. can kill somebody, and then it can just do that indefinitely every time yeah, it happens. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, oh yeah, because the squads have to be within two inches, right? Yep. Yep. And then you have the Revenger, which is the one Tanner has, can ignore cover when it is uh, charged. When it is charged? When it, yeah. Yeah. When it has arc. Yeah, when it has arc. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's why I gave this one a second melee weapon, which is this weapon right here. I know this kind of looks like a gun. Uh, it's definitely a shock stick. <laughs> it's, it's, oh, the rod. It's called the force rod arm is what it's called. Um, and it's, it's this, this guy right here. And what I imagine is, is you, you punch it into people. It explodes. And it, and it just like kind of a, like, a, what's the pneumatic pump type deal? Oh, like they like, use to kill cows. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Like no country for old men. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that's a wonderful, uh, but yes. Look, I eat that's beef. kind of okay. what I imagine it to be, is it just kind of like, she goes, shunk, and just like, Armor penetrating. Yeah. Yeah. Or no, or no. I think it's more of like a blunt, blunt weapon. Oh, okay. Just kind of just like. He punched out all my blood. Yeah. 
did you did you highlight our green metallic mix with anything? Nope. So it's just hanging out. And being yeah, I'm not even really getting to highlights yet. I'm just kind of figuring out what these colors are going to be looking like. And then once I get a base coat that I'm happy with, then I start to refine with shades and, and highlights and stuff. So I think I'm getting there with the base coats, where great coat gray and the, the red and this green I'm pretty happy with. Um, and then I'll start shading with a couple of those other colors to kind of build up something that, a little bit more interesting. And that's probably when I'll put that purple in there. Center up, Jordan. Because this is looking a lot more like what the color concept is, mm -hmm. where it's got, it's got that gray, it's got the green, and then it's going to have the glow basically everywhere, apparently. Okay. It's that all over the place. It's literally all over the place. Travis is asking how similar the attachment points for the Firebrand and the Scourge are to the Dusk Wolf. Totally different. 100%. Yeah, they're very different. Because um, they're all specifically made for each individual Warjack, right? So, for example, on the Scourge, um, these two side weapons right here connect to this, this like floating, well, not floating, but this like arm that comes out of the shoulder. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if you look at this here, this piece right here is attached to the arm. Yeah, which is not the same at all as the this, shape of the attachment point. Yeah, the this, this whole part attaches is this right here, and yeah. it attaches to this. And on the Dusk Wolf, so right and I believe the Firebrand, the weapon mount sits on the shoulder, and on the Scourge, right. it's keyed so they're like glued onto the yeah. side. Yeah, yeah right. they are, they are so keyed to, I mean, this is a better question for you, to be honest, because you're the one who does all the keying <laughs> for all of this. Right. <laughs> I didn't work on these guys, though, unfortunately. Oh, well. I didn't work on the jacks for this one. Not yet. Oh, how dare you. I know. I'm working on the units, though. Well, there you go. Paint a little bit of this black. Travis, would you need to buy different magnets for a different size? Uh, that, I don't know. I, I cannot say with certainty. But you can always email Brian M. at privateerpress.com. He loves questions. All right, so now I think I'm going to start working towards a little bit of a highlight here. Um, so I'm going to take this great coat gray. Hit a I don't. Uh, I don't think we're close to releasing a hot pink paint for glow. But if you want a hot pink, I mean, paint there is a hot recipe pink paint that's coming. Then uh, ooh, spoilers. Oh, we've talked about it already. Ooh, think spoilers. What am I looking for? We're beyond spoilers. We're at trailers now. Are you, uh, with confidence, do you have any uh, any idea when that's showing up, Jordan? No. No, I do not, unfortunately. So you can email Jordan Lamb for stopgap measures of making your own hot pink paint glow color. Or try different stuff. Well, you make uh, one yourself. Actually, a couple weeks ago when you guys did the uh, Paladin Weavers, you guys did a you guys did a pink glow effect on there, so... You could always just go back and watch Get Your Pan On from a few weeks ago, and that might help you out. Also a good idea. So I'm mixing a little bit of moldy ochre into the, uh, the Great Coat Gray to kind of see if that makes a nice little highlight color. That could work. This might be a little too green, um, so I might have to stay away from yellows and the highlights here. Moldy ochre and Great Coat Gray, huh? Yep. All right, all right, all right. And are you using that to highlight what exactly? Uh, the gray. Okay. Like on the claw? Uh, on the top part of the armor. Okay. Yeah, yeah that, that is correct, that email address. Okay, yeah. So I'm curious, mm -hmm. why uh, why is moldy ochre the choice of the mixed color here for this highlight? It's just a nice bright yellow that's not like too saturated. I guess the the more direct question is why a yellow as used for for this highlight mix. Um, 
don't know. It was just the first thing that popped in my mind. Just made sense? Yeah, I didn't want to make it really blue, which, like, if I use Frostbite, it becomes really blue. Um, I love Frostbite. It's such an awesome paint. I don't just want to use Mount Highlight because that's boring. What about Sickly Skin with that has a little bit of a green cast yeah, to yeah. it? Yeah, you could. Um, but that would be more of a highlight that you would use afterwards. It's like a, more of a, like a final highlight type thing. Um, I mean, it is turning this purple grayer, so can't argue with that. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Kind of, well, kind of on the fence about this. Man, this stream is like flown by. We've got about ten minutes left. Okay. Yep. What we're gonna do the uh, get your pa or the P three painters. We're already yeah, doing we get do. your paint on. Kaylin. We do have some P three painters for this week. Look, this is my second time, Tanner. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. For <laughs> on you, Tanner, you need to be a mentor. That's Jordan's job. Is it? I'm here to get mentored. No, yeah, well, get mentored <laughs> then, kid. And are you using that same uh, moldy ochre and gray coat gray on the claw there? No, I'm just rebase coating it over to the gray coat gray. Just straight up gray coat gray? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Hmm. What do you think about Jordan? I'm just. I really don't like this being like a greenish tone. And I'm trying to think of like <laughs> the best way to change it. But it also looks kind of like the color concept. So maybe that's just right. Um, I don't know. It's going to take a, a lot more refinement and kind of getting into the highlights and shadows. It's also just kind of hard to see. Do you, do you get a better idea of it if you were to base coat other parts of the model and get yeah. and get rid of some of that undercoat? Yeah, I think what I would do if like it, for the studio one is I would probably just get an airbrush out and I would just airbrush this thing in uh, gray coat gray. And then I would do all of the glow. I would pick out all of the, the green and then I would shade and highlight the gray coat gray until I got it right. So which is probably what I'm going to redo with this guy afterwards. Um, because part of, part of it is there's a, there's a ton of glow that's on here. Too much to, to paint in this stream. Because it would take literally an hour for me to go in and base coat all of the glow with Menoth White base and then go over it with the right proportions of red and stuff. It's just going to take forever. So I can't really do it on the stream. Um, Maybe you're not trying hard enough. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, maybe we could do a little bit of this. Alfredo and Dino on Facebook. So what type of faction is the Scourge? If you head over to the Warcaster.com page, there's a bunch of fluff about all the factions. You can find out how they work. We also made a couple of uh, uh, some really short faction intro videos. Uh, about what they're like, and if you watch some of the recent uh, dev chats, um, especially yesterday's dev chat where um, uh, Hungerford and Oz go over the rules for every unit currently uh, scheduled for Warcaster uh, and all their rules and everything, so you get a good idea of how everything plays that way. So this is taking that like highlight mixture that I had before, which was the coal black, beaten purple, plus a little bit of mouth white highlight, and mixing that in with great coat gray to make a highlight color for the great coat gray that I'm doing on the claw right now. So you got three colors going on for your highlight. Four. Four. Yeah. Coal black, beaten purple. Great coat gray. Great yeah. coat gray and mouth white, white highlight. Yeah. Man, that's uh, it's pretty meta. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going. on. Well, and I wanna, I wanna. This like, is some of just like some of the weird stuff that I end up doing. It's just like I'll have a color on my palette that I'm like, 
maybe that would work with this other color to mix in for the for a highlight color, and then I'll have to like re-engineer that color mm -hmm. back from from scratch because I'll I'll be like in this process where I'll have a ton of paint just on my palette, and I'll just find something that works, mm -hmm. and then I'll just have to re-engineer that color from scratch. Figure out what it was. Yeah, I, I would like you to break down those four colors because they're not four random colors, and each one is being added for a specific reason. So for instance, my guess is that the addition of the Menoth White Highlight is just to control your the value, value. Yep. right? To brighten it up. What are the other colors in there so, for? So the purple, right, to kind of get into that. so. We want this contrasting color to be blue-violet, right? So you're thinking blue and purple, basically. So the blue is great, or is a coal black and great coat gray. Great coat gray delivers more of a strong gray tone to the, the, the surface and kind of roots it back with the, the base coat. <clears throat> the beaten purple is where you get your purple. Your coal black is where you get your blue. But the coal black also has a little bit of green, so it ties it into the the, the metal. Gotcha. So that's that's kind of what I'm looking for here is a little bit of all of those different things that come together. And this is actually the happiest I've been with the the armor so far. This purple or this color is sweet, actually. I really like it. Yeah, it's like it's really muted, but it's got this like really cool like subtle color tone to it. Yeah, it's like a gray that you can see a little bit of purple in. Yeah. I really like that. So the question is, where do we go from here? How do we bring up that value more without just adding white? Um, and maybe the answer is just adding white. Like, if, if it's supposed to be gray, then adding more white isn't necessarily a problem. So maybe we try that a little bit more white, highlight it again, and then see. And then we might have to go back in and like glaze some other colors into it to bring back a little bit of, of color. Why does Faye think I'm a bad mentor? That's rude. <laughs> you know how many people you, I've you taught to paint? me. <laughs> <laughs> Did I? <laughs> I don't even remember. It's just part of my day to day. Yeah, encourage the guest. <laughs> thank you, you. Kaylin, for being a guest on Get Your Paint On. Oh, thank you. Again. <laughs> Your presence is appreciated. Thanks. Despite what Tanner says. Whatever. Don't put that on me. It's okay. I, we hate I, you. I don't still, come back. I still love Tanner. It's okay. He doesn't have to love me back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when we're at a good spot, though, we should use some of these last few minutes to check out our awesome P3 painters. Sounds good to me. And for people who may be joining us for the first time, Jordan, do you want to remind them what P3 painters is? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so give me two seconds. He forgot what it was. I'm like deep into a blunder right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so P3 Painters is a place where our community members, folks who have subscribed to the channel or who participate in visiting with us in any sort of way, uh, can submit pictures of their painted models for us to take a look at. Uh, and usually once a week, we will um, look through the models that have been submitted and pick a couple out that we like and we'll talk about on them on stream. Uh, the easiest way for you to submit these is through um, Instagram. Inst Instagram, yeah. Uh, which at hashtag P3 Painters. And that's typically where we look. We, we have looked on the other social media platforms as well, but the overwhelming majority of people who submit photos submit them to uh, In Instagram. Instagram. So that's the easiest way to kind of to submit them somewhere. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that real quick and we'll take we'll a look. Higher. Yeah. All right, so this is from Olaf Miniatures. Yep. What do we got? I really like this uh, like airbrushed um, stencil pattern on the, yeah. on the top of the model. Yeah, it's I really love cool. that. And I like, I mean, I like how it's not everywhere. Like it's just yeah, on it's, these it's, sections. It's only done in a couple of very specific yeah. spots. Yeah. I really like how it fades between like a green and a black and it's got almost a wet looking natural corrosion to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. This is weird. I was talking last week um, or a couple weeks ago how I, I kind of like unconventional color schemes and I would think that this falls in that category. This is not a color scheme that would typically come to mind. Especially for Syrah, uh, yeah. Yeah, but it's got this like in that dark area, it's kind of got this purple brown and then like which works well with the yellow. That purple makes it work well with the yellow uh, and then that glow is just, it's present but without being too punchy 
Looks like Space Carapace almost. It's great. Yeah, that looks awesome. Nice job, Olaf Miniatures. Let's see. Where's my next one? Here we go. Sorsha. Good old Sorsha bust. So this nice Sorsha bust going on. This just is just nice and, this is I like, nice and clean. I like the shadows that they're getting into the armor down at the bottom. That like kind of bluish gray tone is nice. My favorite part is that she looks super angry, which yeah. is very appropriate. <laughs> That's true. <Stern. laughs> That's true. <clears throat> that is it's the, almost like she's looking back at the painter being like, I do not appreciate you taking my picture right now. <laughs> A nice, uh, uh, the, the hat has got kind of an off-white light brown fur. Mm -hmm. Pretty nice, too. I like yeah, that. Yeah, and it looks like this is a whip, so Nomadic Christopher, nice job. I want to see, yeah. uh, see what Show the final looks the like. Show me the finished product. Yeah. And our last one, uh, cover your eyes. This one's bright. Oh. It's so bright. This is, yeah. And this is, this is cool. <laughs> it's just painted sweet glow. glow it, effects. It's just, yeah. yeah. It hurts my eyes in a good way. That when is a very glowy trident. When we looked at this before the stream, uh, I actually drew attention to the basing on there, which I think is really interesting. Looks like, like a, looks like a street with a little like gutter or something mm -hmm. going on there. Yeah. And there's maybe a manhole over there in the corner or something like that. But uh, yeah, I thought it was really cool looking. Yeah, I can't. Now I think I think this is a resin I, base insert because yeah. I feel like I've seen that before. And I think that the glow is airbrushed on, but I could be wrong. That could be. Hand painted in there. It's very mm. signary. That's what I was gonna say. It could yeah. uh, be disguised. Yeah, it's hard to say. It, it's uh, the blue looks like it's airbrushed. Yeah, that would be my guess, but I'm not sure. So Davy and Groovy it doesn't say anything in the notes about whether it's been airbrushed think, or not. I think but they yeah, did a good job on the, where the glow kind of moves out of the channels, right? Because mm -hmm. it's Wait, really strong this, on the inside is this of there. Just LED, like actual LED glow? I don't know. I don't think, I, I can't tell from the picture. I mean, there, there could be, but I'm inclined to think that it is, it is painted. It's hard to see. Like, it's a pretty low res yeah. image. So. I, yeah, I, I don't think so. Yeah, it, some parts of it look like it could be, some parts of it don't. Yeah. Dabby and correct us if we're wrong. Either way, yeah. it looks fantastic. It looks dope, though. Awesome, I like this glow. awesome model. Cool. Well, everybody. Thank Clearly, you so Jordan much. Jordan needs to head out of here to go take a nap. Yeah, yeah. go take a nap. <laughs> Thanks everybody for for joining us today. I look forward to seeing y'all next week and uh, showing you some more of these guys when they're more fully painted and stuff. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. Take it easy. I'm gonna get back to work doing the painting things. And um, take we'll a see you guys next week. And maybe right. take a nap. <laughs> nap time. Thanks Keep for nap time. watching. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye.